Hey everyone, Jonathan Baylor here, and I am even more excited than I usually am. We have a gentleman whose work I've followed personally for many, many years, a man who is out there in the mainstream helping literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people live better, illustrating just how much deeper ultra long-term wellness is than counting calories and how we can, we can dig so much deeper but still keep things simple. He's the author of myriad number one New York Times bestselling books, including The Blood Sugar Solution, Ultra Metabolism, The Ultra Mind Solution, The Ultra Simple Diet, and he's also the co-author of Ultra Prevention. I am ultra excited to welcome Dr. Mark Hyman to the show. Hey, Dr. Mark, how's it going? I'm great. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. Well, Dr. Hyman, it is an absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure to have you here. And before we dig into all things medical and deeper than calories, can, can, you, can we take a step back? And you're an MD, you're a practicing physician. How did you make the transition from, let's call it your normal everyday physician to the Superman sort of physician that you've become today? Well, you mean how did I get into the ideas that I'm working with now, or how did I get to have best-selling books? A, a little bit of both, right? I mean, because you, you're still a practicing <laughs> physician. How do you fit it all in? That's right. Yeah, well, you know, hard work, basically. <laughs> you know, I think, I, think uh, I started out predisposed to these ideas. So I, I actually was very interested in integrative medicine before it was called integrative medicine. Nutrition, I studied in college. I studied yoga. I was very interested in the role of nutrition and health. In fact, in medical school, I was sort of an outcast and a pioneer thinking about these ideas. And uh, in college, I read a book called Nutrition Against Disease, which was a very profound book by Roger Williams, the father of uh, sort of biochemical individuality, one of the fathers of functional medicine. And that book really kind of woke me up to the possibility of using food as medicine. Mm -hmm. And that was just in my consciousness. And, uh, and then I went through medical school and I got brainwashed. And, uh, <laughs> I basically realized that, uh, you know, after a while doing this, that giving prescriptions to patients to deal with symptoms wasn't the solution, that I needed to get to the root cause. And the root cause was usually what they were eating in their lifestyle and the environment. And that's what functional medicine is. It's a way of dealing with the causes, not just the symptoms. It's medicine by cause, not by symptom. And it's a very profound way of thinking about how to create health. It's really the science of creating health. Uh, so that's what I do every day in my practice. I have an ultra wellness center in Lenox, Massachusetts, and we work with thousands of patients and we help them regain their health from complex issues that really no one else can figure out because they're not thinking the right way. So it's really a thinking problem. And when, when you use the roadmap, the, the, the architecture of functional medicine, you begin to look through a different set of lenses and you begin to see patterns and how things connect and how everything relates to everything else. And using that information, you can help someone create health. Uh, and food is just a natural part of that. In fact, it's the most powerful drug that I have. I use other other treatments, but food is by far, in a way, the most powerful drug on the planet. And food seems like it's so much more than just calories, Dr. Hyman. I mean, why 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 is it still controversial in the mainstream Western medical community that things that we put into our body that uh, other than prescriptions can have a uh, pharmacological right. effect? Yeah, well, that's great. I mean, I, I, you know, written a lot of books, and I wrote my first, uh, you know, book really talking about this was ultra metabolism about eight or nine years ago. Really, where I brought up the idea that all calories are not the same. That really, the calorie method, the thing that you talk about, is really what's 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 keeping us back. Which is the idea that it's all about energy balance, calories in, calories out. Food is just energy, and if you focused on that, you'd be successful in losing weight. Well, it's not really working. Exercise more, eat less, just doesn't work. So the question is, what's really going on here? Food is not just calories, it's information. It's a big headline, right? Food is not just calories, it's not just energy, it's information. What do I mean by that? Well, information, it gives instructions to your body. So it's, it's like a software coding your body, telling it what to do. It's, it's messages sent directly to your DNA with every single bite. So it's not just protein, fats, and carbs. It's not just fiber, it's not just vitamins and minerals. There's also other components, phytonutrients and phytochemicals from food that we don't think are essential, but are actually regulating all sorts of biochemical processes, regulating inflammation and detoxification and um, immune function. We have uh, also RNA, uh, 
plant RNA is now being absorbed, what we realize is being absorbed into our bodies and regulating our own genes. So plant genetic material is talking to our genetic material, telling it what to do. Uh, and also protein, fats, and carbs are not all created equal, right? Mm -hmm. So we have different qualities of the food. So protein from, let's say, a, a feedlot cow is very different from like a wild elk in terms of its composition, in terms of the fatty acids that are in there, in terms of its effect on your immune system, in terms of effect on your metabolism. Um, so it's really important to understand these very fine differences between these different foods. And so you begin to realize that food is actually medicine, that when you go to the grocery store, you should be thinking of it as your pharmacy, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, right? <laughs> we need to be thinking of pharmacology in a different way, which is F-A-R-M-O-C, you know, O-L-G-Y, right? So pharmacology is really the idea that, that what we're growing our plants is really the medicine that we should be using. And, and uh, it's not like a drug. It actually is a drug. In fact, it regulates, it regulates your, your gene function. It regulates your, your enzymes, your biochemistry in very direct and specific ways that are very well mapped out. And I think that's what people just don't get. And what they put on their fork at the end of the day is really the most important thing they can do for not only their health and for the health of the planet and the environment as well. Dr. Hyman, with all the patients you see, I can imagine that you may once in a while get someone who comes in and says, but, but Mark, come on, that, wasn't there that professor that ate 1,400 calories of Twinkies and Ding Dongs every day and lost weight? Why, why can't I just do that? Well, you could. <laughs> you could absolutely do that, and you might lose weight. If you, restrict, if you restrict calories enough, you will lose weight. But how will your health be, right? Weight loss is not the same as health creation. In fact, the thing that I focus on with patients, I never tell patients to lose weight. I never say you need to lose 30 pounds or you need to be on a diet lose weight. Never. What I teach them is how their body works and how to create health. And when you create health, Weight loss happens automatically. You don't have to make people lose weight. You just teach them how to eat in a way that nourishes their body. And we know that, you know, processed, you know, drinks that, that, that people use like Slim Fast or, uh, or, or, or eating Twinkies or Subway diets. I mean, those can help people lose weight, but that doesn't mean you're healthy, right? So we have to sort of not conflate the idea of weight loss and health and really teach people that the information they put in their bodies is really the main determinant of the quality of their health, the quality of their lives. So it sounds like, Dr. Harmon, there's a critical distinction between weight loss and health. Have you also seen a big distinction between weight loss and long-term slimness? Because it seems like we've all lost weight. That's not really the issue. The issue is keeping it off and then enjoying our lives throughout the process. Right, right, right. So, so last night I, uh, you know, had a group of people over for dinner and uh, one, of, one of them was my patient, is a friend who's also a patient, and, you know, have her on a diet that's a healthy diet. And people think it's about deprivation. It's about not having good quality food. It's about, you know, going on and off a diet. It's, it's not, it's eating in a way that sustains you. So we made roasted chickens. They were, you know, uh, organic chickens. I had an incredible salad I got from the farmer's market with lettuce and spinach and fresh shaved beets and carrots and fennel. We had uh, roasted sweet potatoes. And it was a completely nutrient dense diet and I had roasted vegetables, I roasted peppers I got and Brussels sprouts and and cauliflower roasted in the oven with a little olive oil. Just really amazing food. And it was not a deprivation diet. It was it was something that's it's incredibly delicious. And someone said this is the best chicken I've ever had. This is the best thing I've ever had. That's what we should be saying every day. Not that oh this is a job that's deep that's like, you know, it's it's eating medicine. It doesn't taste like medicine. It tastes like a, a delicious nourishing meal. And that's the difference. People don't have to go on a diet and go off a diet. If you lose weight and you go on a diet to lose weight, that's a bad idea. You want to eat in a way that your body was designed to eat, and then it'll automatically lose weight and create health. So when you say automatically lose weight and create health, this is a message that really resonates with me and, and the research I've done. And can you explain a little bit about the underlying biochemistry? Like, let's, let's geek out a little bit here, Dr. Hyman. How is it that when we nourish our body properly, it will automatically pursue a healthy weight as it might now automatically be pursuing an unhealthy weight. Sure, let's just <clears throat> take a few examples. Uh, let's just sort of break it down like protein, fat, and carbs so people understand those. So when you eat protein, are all proteins created equal? 
Yes or no? Well, the answer is, is no. In fact, if you eat a feedlot beef cow, it's full of hormones, antibiotics, pesticides. It has a different fatty acid composition, and it creates an increase in inflammatory molecules called cytokines, like CRP and others, TNF-alpha, IL-1, all of which are promoting disease and aging and cause you to gain weight. Whereas if you eat a grass-fed or wild wild animal, you'll have 500% less uh, bad fats in there. You will produce anti-inflammatory molecules in your body. It'll help improve your metabolism. Uh, so the quality is really important. Fat's the same thing. If you eat gram per gram, if you eat trans fat versus, let's say, omega-3 fats, trans fats, which are man-made fats that are made by taking a vegetable oil, injecting hydrogen, making it solid at room temperature, margarine basically, or shortening, it, it actually binds to receptors in your cells called PPAR, which are little receptors on the nucleus of your cells. Is this too geeky? No, this is <laughs> keep. I'm just like, I love it. Keep okay. going. <laughs> you said geek out. So I thought that was like permission here it to geek out. Absolutely is. So there's little check. receptors on your nucleus. <laughs> uh, so there's little receptors on your cells called PPAR, and these regulate insulin. They regulate inflammation. They regulate your metabolism. So when you eat trans fat or shortening, let's say Cool Whip or you know a Twinkie, you're binding these fats to these receptors. And what that does is one, it creates inflammation. Two, it slows your metabolism. We call oxidative phosphorylation, which is how you process food in your mitochondria. So you basically slow your metabolism and it makes you more insulin resistant. So you become diabetic. And you take, for example, omega-3 fats, which our bodies were designed to eat. You eat that, it binds to the same spot in your cells in the nucleus, but has exact opposite effect. So it, it improves your metabolism, speeds it up. It improves insulin sensitivity. So it prevents diabetes. And it reduces inflammation. And it does that through regulating your gene expression. So when you eat one fat, it turns on bad genes. When you eat another fat, it turns on good genes, even though it's the same gram per gram fat, same calories. Same thing with carbohydrates. You know, if you take carbohydrates from broccoli or you take carbohydrates from soda, there are both carbohydrates, right? But not all carbohydrates are the same. And soda will be all high fructose corn syrup or sugar, and it will drive a fat factory in your liver that will produce uh, a fatty liver, create lipogenesis, which is like this fat factory, and you, you, you create the production of a fatty liver. It increases insulin resistance, increases inflammation. It messes up your hormones. In men, it lowers testosterone. In women, it increases testosterone. It leads to you know a whole cascade of events that leads to uh, heart disease and diabetes and cancer. Whereas if you have the same number of grams of carbohydrate from, let's say, broccoli, it's full of fiber, full of phytochemicals like sulforaphane, and glucosinolates, it's full of folate, magnesium, other vitamins, all of which optimize your metabolism, none of which raise your blood sugar, none of which create insulin production, none of which make your cholesterol abnormal, which the, the sugar from carbo, uh, carbohydrate from, from soda will do. So even though it's exactly the same calories, totally different biological effects. So this this calorie myth, I mean, it really seems like it's missing the point in a sense that what you just said, if I'm understanding correctly, is you could consume the exact same number of calories and have a wholly different metabolic response that has nothing to do with that number of calories at all. Like it's completely irrelevant. It, it's it's everything other than the calories. Absolutely. That's right. In fact, in fact in he, even it's just the... It's even more than that. So there's, there's informational molecules in, in, uh, in food. But if you, for example, just, so if you take the same protein grams, same fat grams, same carb grams, you can have different qualities of those will have a different effect. But even if you, if you juggle around the protein, fat, and carbs and have the same calories, it can have a very different effect. For example, um, one study by my friend, Dr. David Ludwig from Harvard, found that if you took uh, patients and you put them on a higher fat, higher protein diet, lower carb diet, a low glycemic diet with the same calories. And you take another group, put them on a higher carb, lower protein, lower fat diet. The group that was on the higher carb, higher glycemic diet, the one that raised your blood sugar more, even though it was exactly the same calories, they burned 300 less calories a day. So that's like eat, running a mile, an hour a day. If you run an hour a day, that's the difference between 300 calories. So that's eating exactly the same calories. So one diet, will speed up your metabolism. 
system. Another diet will slow down your metabolism, even on the same calories. This has really broad implications for your health. These isocaloric, Does that make sense? Absolutely. These isocaloric studies have gone on for, for decades, Dr. Hyman. They, they blow my mind, and people still seem to be surprised by them. I mean, the main, what, what is not getting communicated to the, because you do an amazing, I mean, I admire the time you spend in the mainstream made, media trying to communicate this message, but like Coca-Cola still puts out billboards that say it's just 140 calories. Why is everyone freaking out? How, how do we get this message across? That's right. <laughs> I, lo I love what uh, the food industry did. They, they co-opted Michelle Obama when she came up with the Let's Move campaign. And they said, you know, we're going to partner with you. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a trillion and a half calories out of the food supply. How great is that? And you know what they did? They made Oreo cookies 90 calories instead of 100 calories. <laughs> That's what they did. They made Twinkies, you know, 120 calories instead of 130 calories. And it's still Twinkies, it's still Oreos, it's still bad information. And we, we really are stuck on this whole idea of, of calories. And I love the fact that you created this book, The Calorie Myth, because it speaks to this whole idea. And I've written you know, a lot about this in my books, but it it's really needs to get out there more. And I, I appreciate the work you've done to sort of synthesize the data. And it's real. Uh, and we're totally confused. And the, the real issue here is that the government, the media, and most physicians and nutritionists still believe in calories, almost every major agency like American Heart Association, American Diabetic Association, American um, Nutritionists, and I think it's the AD called the Dietetic Association, all of them still believe in the calorie myth. Yep. And uh, until we really, you know, shift our policies, until, you know, we start to shift our recommendations, um, we're, we're not going to really get, get much change in our, in our obesity epidemic. And it seems like there's another insidious myth that is a close uh, brother or sister to the calorie myth. And that's, maybe it's not a myth. Let's see what you think. Is this myth of moderation? Because when we, when we talk about calories, sometimes people say, well, it's just 140 calories or just a little bit. But when, when you talk about it's not like a drug, yeah, it is right. a drug. We right. don't say smoke in moderation. We say right, don't right, smoke. Right. Right, right. So I think there's two issues here. One is, you know, you have to eat. So what do you eat? And two is, you know, do the calories really matter? And, and why should we focus on calories? And what about uh, a different way of thinking about things? So I really never focus on calories with patients. I think it's a bad idea. And plus, who can count calories? I mean, even, you know, I'm a trained physician, nutritionist, studied nutrition for decades. I, I have no freaking idea. I mean, you know, you could kind of use a calorie book and a counter but only if you, know, you process food, you know, otherwise you have to weigh and measure everything. I mean, who's going to do that? It's insane. So you have to have a different methodology that works for people and that makes sense, right? Kin and calories doesn't even make sense, even if we were able to do it, which we're not. So we, we have to realize that 100 calories, I did a show on the Today Show, which is 100 calories of, let's say, blueberries versus 100 calories of Oreos, right? Because they have these 100 calorie packs of food. And we think, oh, that's on 100 calories. It's no problem. But it, it has a totally different effect on your body. The net calories is different. And it's not only, you know, it's even more complicated than that because the calories that you eat affect the gut flora that you have. So you have this entire universe of gut bacteria called the gut microbiome that actually uses uh, the food that you eat and transforms it and then regulates your metabolism through its own ac metabolic activity. So your gut bacteria are in fact controlling your metabolism. And what controls your gut bacteria is what you eat. So if you eat blueberries versus Oreos, very different effect on your gut flora, very different effect on your metabolism. So we, our biology is a web. It's a complex web that has enormous impact on our health, and it can directly interact with our environment all the time, with our, what we're eating, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, toxins. So we have to kind of understand the complexity of this. Uh, even, even, for example, toxins have a role. You know, we, we talk about calories, but if your body's toxic, you can't necessarily even metabolize your calories. So we, we've injected toxins into rats, I'm sorry for all you animal, animal lovers out there, but sometimes science uses animals and I didn't do the research. So I'm just reporting on it here. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the rats were infected with toxins and they were, they were uh, eating the same calories. They were gaining weight, even though they ate the same calories because the toxins poison their metabolism. Um, so we need to kind of get away from counting calories. We need to get away from this idea of, you know, of, of, you know, uh, it's all about the calories. And I think the whole idea of moderation, as you said, is, 
It's really interesting. So I have a part of uh, my, what I recommend is unlimited amounts of food. So I, I like to eat. I mean, you, if you tell me to restrict my eating, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it because <laughs> I love to eat. Okay. I'm just not going to do it. So I have to eat foods that I can eat a lot of, right? So last night, what I, I had, I had enormous, we had enormous salad. So I must have had three plates of salad, which was spinach and a uh, great kind of lettuce. I know what's some kind of funky lettuce from the farmer's market, grated beets, grated carrots, fennel. Oh my God, it was so good. And I just, I just ate three plates. Of that, Cause I eat an unlimited refills. So I have unlimited refills. If I want to eat a large volume of food, I get to eat it. Cause I, I like it. Um, I probably wouldn't do that for other parts of my diet. Like if I had a, I might have a sweet potato, but I wouldn't have like 10 sweet potatoes. Right. So I might have a half a sweet potato. But there are areas of my plate that are up for unlimited refills. So, and those are the areas that I put on all the non-starchy vegetables, the things that are very low glycemic, very nutrient dense, relatively low calories. So you could have large volumes and 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 be completely fine. I mean, if you wanted to have 750 calories, you can have a piece of cheesecake and it's 700 calories, or you could have 21 cups of broccoli. Good luck if you can eat it, but 21 cups of broccoli is a lot of broccoli. But, uh, you know, the point is you can just eat as much of that stuff as you want. And there's a lot of benefits to it because it provides all the nutrients and nutrient-dense compounds you need. You mentioned the, the term metabolism and regulating your metabolism. And that, that really seems at the heart of this issue that we're, I don't want to take this too far, but that we consciously need to regulate our metabolism by counting and doing math when we eat and then monitoring what the treadmill says versus, and I, this isn't mushy, this, this is as scientific as it gets, versus tapping into this internal balance system that already regulates our metabolism when our, our gut flora working with our hormones, working with our hypothalamus. Yeah. Like once people, like why have we, why, why do people yeah. think we're so, so our body is broken innately versus understanding that wisdom that's within it? Right, it's so true. I mean, we, we have to sort of, recognize that if you eat in the way we're designed to eat and you get rid and you just eat real food mm -hmm. that you know your body knows what to do it's way smarter than any of us right so uh hormones shift into balance your gut flora balance your immune system balances your mitochondria start working better everything kind of happens so really for me it's about balance and abundance and joy and energy and that's what i want to feel that's what i want to give my patients and the best way that I found to do that is by just picking quality food, mm -hmm. you know, real food. What should we be eating? Fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, and beans, so lean animal protein, or just good quality animal protein. It doesn't even have to be lean if it's good quality fats. And very limited amounts of whole grains, limited amounts of starchy vegetables, and then really pretty much no processed food. I mean, just zero. And that, I think, you know, do I eat processed food? Yeah. I mean, I'll have a piece of chocolate. That's, you know, dark chocolate. That's processed. Uh, will I eat uh, ketchup? That's natural ketchup. Yeah, I'll have that sometimes. Um, so I'll eat, you know, some things that are minimally processed. But basically, if you can give the product to someone in, in fifth grade and they can't read the label, then you shouldn't eat it. Yeah. Right? If they can't pronounce the ingredients and they don't understand what's on the label, then you shouldn't eat it. And by the way, most of us even, in, you know, who've had multiple college degrees can't read most food labels that we eat in processed food and actually tell you what it is. You know, so that's not really food. That's a factory-made science project and we should not be eating it. Speaking of factory-made science projects, what do you say to patients when they say, well, I'm going to eat this ding-dong uh, and then I'm going to jog for a half hour to cancel it out? Well, that's a good idea. So, you know, you have to, you have to run four and a half miles uh, or walk four and a half miles to burn up one soda. Then you have to run four miles every day for a week to burn up one supersized meal. That's every single day for a week to burn up one meal. And if you eat that every day, you'd have to run a marathon every day. So if you want to run a marathon every day, fine, eat whatever you want. But <laughs> I, even then, I think you're not getting the right information. So I think the whole idea that you get to have a workout treat, you work out, you get to have a drink and this and that, these are just bad ideas. I mean, unless you're Kobe Bryant running around the court for 48 minutes flat out, you don't get Gatorade. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not a sport. And then even that, is, it's got all kinds of issues with it. So I, th I think, um, you know, we, we have to forget about counting calories, forget about even calories when we exercise. We need to figure out what kind of exercise we need to do. What's the quality exercise? What's the quality of food? And then forget about it. And your body will figure it out. Your body figures it out. You don't have to get in all this kind of technical mumbo jumbo. 
We didn't do that for centuries. We still don't need to do it. If we focus on what's true, what's real and essential, the rest all works out. Well, so Dr. Hyman, what what can we expect? Let's say we are one of these individuals, because I've seen this in my, my own life and the lives of, of my loved ones, where maybe we are really active and we can get away with eating some of these foods which spike our blood sugar and infuse us with these toxins. I mean, that, that gets back to your earlier point about, sure, you can be skinny and sick, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, you know, what's really frightening is that, uh, well, we have about almost 70% of Americans are overweight. Uh, and that means about, you know, 30% are thin. Of those who are thin, a quarter of them are what we call skinny fat. Mm-hmm. Meaning they look thin on the outside, but they're fat on the inside. They're sick on the inside and look okay on the outside. And how is that? Because the information they're putting in their body is creating changes that lead to obesity. But it's not obesity that you can see. It's the same metabolic biochemical picture as if you were fat, but you're skin. Mm -hmm. Because you lose muscle, you gain fat, you change your hormones, you increase inflammation. All that happens as a result of uh, of eating the wrong things. In fact, in a study of children, they found that there... um, that there was one out of almost one out of four kids who have prediabetes or type 2 diabetes adolescents. But what was me more frightening, there were about 37% of the skinny kids. Yeah. 37% of the skinny kids had either prediabetes or some other biochemical abnormality. So they were hypertensive, they had high cholesterol, high blood sugar, abnormal lipids, and they were thin. So think about it. Almost 40% of thin kids are metabolically obese. What are the implications for that in terms of heart disease, diabetes, and all the rest of the things we see as people age? Dr. Hyman, that really breaks my heart and is one of the things that gets me up in the morning is if you go into a school cafeteria and you look around, it's not like there's a group of kids who are eating hail and wild-caught salmon and they're the thin kids. And then there's a group of kids that have Cheetos and Pepsi and they're the overweight kids. All the kids are eating basically the same garbage in most schools. And some are skinny and some aren't. What's going on there? Yeah. Well, I think we're all genetically quite different. So some of us are more likely to gain weight. Others just get skinny fat, which is, you know, skinny on the outside, fat on the inside. And some people, you know, have very resilient metabolisms and can tolerate a more wide range of stresses. But eventually, uh, you know, it it catches up with you. I mean, you know, UV Blake said he lived to 100 years old. He says, if I knew I was going to live so long, I I I wouldn't have smoked and wouldn't have drank so much. (laughs) So there are are people who just, you know, got the lottery. And uh, and that's true. But for most of us, it's just not true. And what is this? It it, it seems to be a bit of a moralistic uh, view many in our culture have on obesity where, and you've probably seen this in your clinic where, uh, an obese person will come in and say, I, I swear to you, Dr. Hyman, I'm eating, I'm not eating any more than my peers. And I, I stop yeah. when I'm full. I, I don't yeah. know what else to do. And then the, the media just tells these people they're, they're weak and should try harder. What do you say right. to them? Well, you know, it's interesting that the, 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 the sort of social stigma on obesity is huge. And, and they've done studies on this where they've you know, asked kids, would you rather be in a wheelchair or be fat? And they'd rather be in a wheelchair, be disabled than be fat because of the level of stigma. And part of it is because we really blame the fat person in this country. You know, if someone's in a wheelchair, we don't blame them for being in a wheelchair. But if someone's fat, it's your fault. You're just a fat, lazy pig and you eat too much and just stop stuff in your pie hole and everything will be fine. Get out of your, you know, you know, get out of your chair and start walking and you'll be fine. Unfortunately, that's just so not true. Nobody wants to be fat. Nobody wakes up and says, you know, I want to be fat. I'm going to just make myself fat because I want to be fat. It just doesn't happen like that. What happens is that there's a, a, a hormonal biological reality to us that gets triggered in response to eating 150 pounds of sugar and 146 pounds of flour every year per person. So that's almost a pound of flour and sugar combined every day for every man, woman, and child in America. When you do that, it triggers biological addiction, which is actually the subject of my next book, The Blood Sugar Solution 10 Day Detox Diet, that's coming out in February. And we get triggered into a set of, of, of physiologic responses that create this ongoing cycle of, of, um, of chaos, of hormonal and biological chaos that creates obesity. And when you are in that state, it's, it's almost like your biochemistry is locked in, a, in this state. And even if you actually don't eat that much, there are all kinds of factors that are driving you to keep the weight on. Uh, it could be the type of food you're eating. If you're not eating that much, 
will increase insulin. It could be that it's inflammatory foods. It could be that you're allergic. It could be that you're toxic. It could be that you have abnormal gut flora. All these things will drive you to gain weight independent of your calorie intake. Beautiful, beautiful segue there, Dr. Hyman. You'd think we'd plan this. <laughs> so speaking of your wonderful February release of the Blood Sugar Solution 10-Day Detox Diet and Addiction, what is the... You have a different take on detoxes. They cleanses, detoxes have been talked about for a while, but I, I've always admired your metabolic understanding. What can we expect uh, to, to, to see in this book and, and how is it different from some of these more gimmicky cleanses and detoxes out yeah. there? I mean, listen, you know, you can do a juice cleanse, you can do a flush, you can do all kinds of stuff and all that's great. I mean, all that's wonderful and people can get a short-term benefit and clear out their diet. And I encourage people to experiment with that. But what I'm really talking about is true detox, like detox from heroin or detox from cocaine or detox from nicotine or caffeine. These are biologically addictive substances. And the science has shown us unequivocally that these foods are biologically addictive. The processed foods, the sugar is biological. Sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. There was a study at Connecticut College a few weeks ago showed that Oreos lit up the brain like cocaine, not even like cocaine, worse than cocaine, right? So would you give your kid a line of Coke? No, but you'd give them Oreo cookies when they come home from school. Does that really make sense given what we know about the biology of food addiction? So... Most people are hooked in this cycle of food addiction. And the purpose of my book is one to bring consciousness to this idea that processed foods, that sugar in pharmacologic doses is biologically addictive. And two, to provide a clear path for people to detox and reset their hormones, reset their metabolism, and get unhooked from food addiction. And using the science of functional medicine, you know, treating the whole system, you know, we devise a strategy to balance all the hormones and all your immune molecules and change your biochemistry very quickly through food and through some simple lifestyle practices that reset everything. So we did this with 600 people. We, did, we had a few thousand start, about 600 finished, uh, filling out all the data, which is what they had to do. And most people don't like to fill out the data. So we had six people actually fill out the data. We got extraordinary results. Not only did people see dramatic improvements in weight and their reduction in waist size and so forth, but their overall symptom score from all diseases and all symptoms reduced by 62%. They got healthy. And, and thirdly, their addiction was gone in a couple of days. I mean, you go through a physiologic withdrawal. I mean, if you take rats and you addict them to sugar and then you cut the sugar out, they go through withdrawal, just like if they were getting them off of heroin or cocaine. They have agitation, they have the shakes, they're irritable, they're just agitated, just like what happens when you get off sugar. But the way I've designed the program is to minimize all those effects and to quickly redial all your molecules and your hormones so that you don't feel that. So I really want to bring to light the addiction story. I want to bring to light that there's a path out of that and that, that there is rehab for your metabolism. And it only takes a few days. And in 10 days, people can completely reset. It's such, a, it's such a compelling message for two reasons, Dr. Hyman, I feel. And, and the first is that it really does show that this isn't a moral failing of people. It's an information no. problem because I don't know any parent that gives their child cocaine. Why? Because they know how bad it is for them. So it seems like step one is, like you said in your book, The, the Blood Sugar Solution 10-Day Detox Diet, to educate people on how much more serious this really it's is. Very it's very serious. I mean, it's, when you really stop and think about it, it's very serious because if this is true, and I believe it is, and the science shows it is, then the implications are huge. Why do we allow this without warning labels? I mean, we allow alcohol, we allow nicotine, right? But there's warning labels. You know, don't drive when you drink this. This will kill you if you smoke it. You know, okay, we should have on every label of soda should say, if you drink this, it will cause addiction and make you fat and sick and kill you. And yeah, I mean, that's what it should say. It should be proper food living. I know that sounds like a crazy idea, but if this, if this is really true, and it is, then we need to, we, we, we regulate seatbelts, we regulate vaccines, we regulate, you know, all sorts of things in society. We make people um, regulate tobacco. I mean, we, we have regulations that protect our citizens, right? We need that, to think differently about this. And people say, well, people have to eat. Yes, they do. But they don't have to eat junk food. They don't have to eat processed food. In fact, these were just new inventions in the last 50 to 100 years. It didn't even exist before. So, no, we don't have to eat that. 
Uh, and I think it's a, it's a problem because we've got a $1 trillion food industry that profits from making people sick and fat. And that's not going to go away easily. And it's going to take people like you and me and others talking about these issues, getting out there in the news, the media, changing the conversation, getting people to have the experience, having them talk about it and seeing the truth about this. Because this isn't just a, a new gimmick. I mean, your book, Calorie Myth, it's not a gimmick. It's not a, a quick fix thing. It's, a, it's an intelligent conversation about why we're in this pickle and why everybody's advice isn't working. Just eat less, exercise more. It's all about the calories. It's all about energy balance. This is really the myth that's getting us into trouble. Dr. Hyman, I'm, I'm got, I got a little chills here, so <laughs> I can't think of a better way to end the show. But tell us a bit where we can learn more about your upcoming book, The Blood Sugar Solution, 10-Day Detox Diet, as well as you just have so many free resources. Where can we get yeah. more info? So you can go to my website, drhyman.com. I've written about The Blood Sugar Solution, The Blood Sugar Solution Cookbook, which are great resources. I have plenty of free articles and videos on my website all the time. And... Um, in my book, is coming out in February with a public television show that's coming out at the same time. And, and I'll be having an online course that'll be supporting people to actually participate. And I believe that it's not just about doing it alone. It's about doing it Absolutely. in community. And the power of, of the community, the power of friends and social networks and peers to, to sort of encourage you, connect with you, support you, is really going to make this much easier. So all those are available. And, and, and uh, if you want to pre-order the book, go ahead. It's, uh, I think it's up on Amazon now. <laughs> I love it. Well, friends, if you have not checked out uh, Dr. Hyman's work, absolutely, please do. One of the individuals out there rooted in the science and also, as you can tell from this conversation, understanding this is about so much more than weight loss. This is about giving us back that which is innately ours and has been stolen from us, and that is health and vitality and the ability to manifest the, the purpose that we were put here to, to live. Uh, we're not just all lazy and stupid. There's something else going on. So, Dr. Hyman, thank you so much for all the work you do, all the lives you save, and for sharing your time with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. That was great. Listeners, again, thank you for joining us. Please check out Dr. Hyman's work. And remember, this week and every week after, eat smarter, exercise smarter, and live better. Chat with you soon.